Hey Larry, what's the name, boy? Welcome back to the channel here on Fog Entertainment. We have got Blackbird Season 1, Episode 4. What's her name? Now, to be fair, we're saying Season 1, but in reality it's just Episode 4 because it's not really happening, if we're being honest. But we do kick off Episode 4 with a flashback to 1973. So you can kind of guess here that you've got um, the big one. The big 1973. We've got flashbacks with Larry and also Jimmy here. And we see the parallels in their two life, of course. We've got a funeral. Um, and young Larry is encouraged to join his father in the middle of the night. I wonder what for. Some digging. Grave digging, boy. Let's do some of that. Um, and we see how he has to do that. You know, some sick things. He has to pull the rings off the dead people, man. Get the rings. And you've got Larry... Um, crying and keeping the finger, which is a bit weird. Then you get Jimmy playing football with his dad, Ray Luata. Um, You know, I think, I think the scenes with Jimmy and his dad, like, they were fine, but I think there was a wee bit, like, considering what this show's about, you know, like a serial killer and... Uh, but we wee bit more than that. Seeing Jimmy get tickled by his dad for, like, a solid 15 minutes of screen time this episode, probably... Could have done against this. Um, we then see Jimmy. He wakes up as we are in the present now. He goes into Larry's cell. He opens up a penthouse magazine on the floor, stuffed under a pile of hot rods and a big, big bag. Well, I say big bag, a big glue roll. Um, he finds loads of pictures here that Larry's drawn. You know, showing women being killed. There's blood everywhere. Violent imagery here. Graphic imagery. Um. And he tries to wait for some information, but, I mean, yeah, he can't really find any information. He's just finding a lot of, you know, blood images, man. Just dirty. Not very good. Um, Jimmy then says, hmm, damn. Gotta go back to my own cell. And then when he gets to his own cell, Carl is there waiting. Jimmy then tells him, I don't have the money. Now the guard is fucked because he, he can't get the money. And it's weird, though, you know. Because, like, you think Carter told him about this situation. Like, you would expect Carter to, like, retaliate in some shape or form. But here he is looking a bit weaker. It's almost like this... I don't know if this plot line was true, right? Maybe they just added this side story for a bit of fucking... You know, a bit of entertainment. But it just seems a bit weird that he would only, he would ask for 10 grand for this guy. The guy can't even deliver the 10 grand. And then the repercussions for Jimmy or even his dad are, like, nil. All the repercussions are for the guard. And I get that he needed the money. But you'd think he would have made life a wee bit tougher for Jimmy. Boy, on the outside, but he doesn't. But we can clearly see here that it's a precarious situation and a ticking time bomb. But in Springfield here, the prison, there's a wee bit of airy silence. And Larry's like, riot, quiet. So it looks like he's convinced something's going to go down. What was better, this prison riot or the one in prison break? Of course the one in prison break. Let's not fucking kid ourselves here. But they're going absolutely mental. There's people getting killed. <laughs> You know, it makes you wonder though, like, see when these prisoners kill the guards, like, what, like, in these riots, like, what, what the fuck do they think is going to happen, man? Like, I, I think once you start killing these prison guards, you should be, I mean, you're going to get the fuck barred out of you by the guards, man. It should be like, you, you, that's you fucked, you, you, you get automatic life. Not a good job being a prison guard, I will fucking tell you. I will seriously, um, tell you there's blood everywhere so we're forced into lockdown but weirdly larry was right and because of this you know larry has essentially been appointed head cleaner which prompts these two to talk quite a lot throughout this whole experience now i mean they did this quick cleaning s sequence last a wee bit too long i think you could argue that right there's a lot to clean up here but they were essentially just in they had the cafeteria and um, larry says that you know, like, I also grew up in cemeteries, claiming it. He said it was a pretty place, nice to grow up. But I specialized in medical supplies. Um, and then Larry says, it's a selfish act for the deceased to be buried with their own belongings when they could be using it to do good. I mean, let's, I mean, this guy comes up with pretty decent logic. Sometimes, but not here. Like, why the fuck should some dead person give up, you know, their, I, I, their wedding ring to you, Larry? A fucking pedophile? Exactly, son. They're not going to do that. 
come on, man. Then we cut back to more flashbacks. We see Lar Larry's father. He encourages him to even cut off the guy's finger like I talked about earlier. He does it with fucking pliers, man. He manages to get it, though. But there's no remorse or emotion towards his son. But interestingly, though, Jimmy's relationship, though, is dirty. Isn't exactly all that good as well because his dad obviously working most of the time he's drunk and his mum just seems to be a whore like they cannot point out in the fact that she was a whore right and that she ends up finding a new man and, and the man beats her and Jimmy tried to beat him up he thought he was old enough by doing karate classes but then by God, he gets battered and he's telling Larry this this whole time and Larry's like the real pain here is that Glenn who's the new boy uh she seemed to love him more than Jimmy, and absolutely, and I think it actually really fucking hit Jimmy hard here. His mum's a fucking cunt, man, letting her son and herself get beat up. Oh, we're going to have to wait till you're strong enough. Oh, fuck off, man. What? Like, we never even got to see this Glenn character, but how how idiotic is that? Like, I, 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 I just honestly just do not get this, man. I, I really think this is fucking stupid. But here, it's based off a true story, so who am I to say? Uh, Larry then goes into a wee bit of truths of his own. He talks about the girls, how he, he makes them pass out by soaking a rag in starter fluid and covering their face. And I do this to stop them hitting me, Jimmy. Ah, uh, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. It is a confession, but, you know, I think uh, Jimmy's going to need more. Uh, Larry is then visited by Gary. And he asks about the girl they picked up in California. Apparently she left the next day, and the girl's name is Sharon. Um, Gary then tells him that the police have been sniffing around and says to Larry, you got to lay low, boy. And then Larry's like, I'm pretty confident I'm going to beat my appeal. Um, so yeah, it was kind of intriguing about where this was going to go, um, to be honest. This episode, like, with this Gary hanging, like, where's this story going to go about this girl in California? Hmm, very intriguing, but it will make a bit more sense later on. But, yeah, I think it's a good show. I think it's, like, a standard, like, 7 out of 10, like, overall, I would say, but... You know, I'll give this episode a 7. So, I mean, the, the pilot was a 7, the 2 in the middle were 6s, and this one's a 7. So that's what's going to do it, guys, for uh, What's Her Name. But until next time, peace.